My name is Api Apalingam, and I'm the president for WTS Philadelphia. I'm also the chief development officer for the city of Philadelphia's Department of Aviation. Uh, this is a very exciting year for WTS Philadelphia. We're celebrating our 45th anniversary this year, and this series is one of our 45 in 45 initiatives. Our goal is to do 45 unique things in our 45th year. Uh, we're very grateful for the support of our chapter sponsor, especially the Sapphire and Platinum sponsors, and I want to take a moment to recognize those sponsors. Our Sapphire sponsors are Jacobs, the City of Philadelphia's Department of Aviation, and Plenary Infrastructure Philadelphia. And our Platinum sponsors are AECOM, CNS Companies, GPI, Haynes & Kibble House, HDR, HNTB, HOK, JMT, STV, TD, TPD, and Urban Engineers. Uh, we're grateful for the support of all of these sponsors and many more um, who support events like today and the events that uh, we will be doing throughout the rest of the year. With that said, I'm going to turn it over to Tamara Nicholson, who is the Secretary of WTS Philadelphia and the owner and principal consultant of Unicorn Consulting Solutions, and who had the idea for day, today's webinar and led its development. So with that said, Tamara. Thank you, Afi. Can everyone see my slide here? Yes. Okay. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. As Avi said, I'm Tamara Nicholson, Principal of Unicorn Consulting Solutions and also Secretary of WTS Philadelphia. Thank you for joining us to learn about human trafficking awareness and prevention, specifically in the transportation industry. I am happy to be joined by our three guest speakers today, Leslie Richards, General Manager of SEPTA, Jason Sankey, Airport Security Manager for the City of Philadelphia Department of Aviation, and Marissa Belanda, Deputy Policy Director for the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. They have firsthand knowledge about this topic and they are ready to share that information with all of you. What we'll do for the next 50 minutes or so is I will give some general information on human trafficking awareness and prevention, and then each speaker will provide information more specific to their organization. The goal is by the end of this hour, all of you will log off with a better understanding and awareness about human trafficking. I would like to start with a poll to gauge the level of exposure of human trafficking awareness within the audience here. So let's, I'll start the poll. Okay, so it looks like most of the people here, they have awareness through movies, documentaries, news articles. Um, there are people who had some type of a, awareness uh, exposure. Um, some have had firsthand experience and then a good portion have not had education at all. So this is great. There's something for everyone um, within this hour. I'll just close out of this. Uh, so hopefully this will help, this, this next hour will help it, um, enforce, reinforce any education that you already have, and then provide some initial information for those who have never had any exposure to uh, human trafficking awareness. So we are, We'll start with um, what is human trafficking? There are two legal definitions for human trafficking. There's labor trafficking and sex trafficking. Uh, I will say that victims of human trafficking are protected under the US and local laws. So the crime will fall on the individuals that are exploiting the victims. Labor trafficking involves forced labor which is a situation where victims are forced to work against their own will under the threat of violence or some other form of punishment. 
their freedom is restricted and a degree of ownership is exerted. Sex trafficking is where individuals are compelled to engage in commercial sex through the use of force, fraud, or coercion. When a person under 18 years old is persuaded or encouraged to perform a commer commercial sex act, it is automatically a crime and force, fraud, or coercion does not have to be proven. So we have these three common words highlighted in red, and I'll give some examples of each. So force can be physical or sexual assault, confinement, or restraint. Coercion can be the threat of harm to the victim or their family, confiscation of identification, or threats to have them deported. And fraud can be false promises or deception. Labor and sex trafficking can impact men, women, boys, and girls of all ages, races, genders, and nationalities. Certain populations are more targeted because they are seen as more vulnerable, and that includes individuals with substance abuse issues, the unsheltered, and individuals with an undocumented immigrant status, just to name a few. So today we are focusing on transportation because traffickers are often rely on the transportation industry in every phase of human trafficking for recruitment, for moving and controlling victims, and for delivering victims to buyers who then exploit them. Uh, this quote, it came from Polaris, which is an organization that supports human trafficking survivors. They also perform research and provide data based on actual trafficking experiences through interviews with survivors. And I, a little bit later in the presentation, I can put this information um, in the chat it's a very good resource for educational purposes. Some may be wondering, is this really happening in my area? And the answer is yes, absolutely. As you can see here, this is a heat map that shows calls made to the National Human Trafficking Hotline. All of these spots that you see here are confirmed cases of locations of human trafficking situations in the United States in 2020 alone. I personally did come across a situation that was possibly human trafficking during a trip to upstate New York back in 2020. And at that point, my level of awareness was what I saw in the movies. I had no idea that it was actually happening all around us. And it wasn't until after the fact, when I learned more about human trafficking, that when I think back to that situation, all of the warning signs were there. So now the numbers that you see under this map are saved in my phone, and I encourage all of you to do the same. Those are the phone numbers to the National Human Trafficking Hotline that you can call or text if you suspect human trafficking is taking place. Now, the phone number here is a little, it's, it's a little funny, but I think that's to help um, memorize it. But the phone number is one 888 373 7888. And the number to text is 233-733. So here are some indicators that law enforcement and survivors have shared that may be helpful in recognizing that a situation is off and could be human trafficking. But this is not an exhaustive list. There are other signs that, could, that can be present that may not be here on this list. I recommend everyone taking a good look at these indicators and having them in the back of your mind. So if you do come across a situation that doesn't seem quite right to you and some of these indicators are present, hopefully that helps confirm your suspicion and encourage you to contact authorities. We can all do our part to help the fight against human trafficking. The first thing is what we're doing here today. Educate yourself and others about human trafficking. Also, scan. This is a method that is used by frontline transit workers, but it can also be used by everyone here today as you navigate through the transportation industry. So SCAN stands for survey your environment. Be aware of what's happening around you when you're out and about. If you see something that doesn't quite seem right, consider if what you're observing could be human trafficking based on what you know 
the indicators that we just highlighted and the circumstances of the situation itself. Um, and then you acknowledge what you are observing, if it could most likely be human trafficking. And then if so, notify the proper authorities to investigate the situation further. At the end of the day, go with your gut. You can never be 100% sure human trafficking is hidden in plain sight because it happens in a way where observers second guess themselves. Um, so if you come across a situation, you could be thinking you don't want to be wrong, but what if you're right? If you're wrong, you can take 10 minutes out of someone's life to go investigate and confirm that everything's okay. If you're right, you can literally save someone's life. So I will leave you with that and turn it over to Leslie Richards to dive deeper into this topic and talk about what SEPTA is doing. Fantastic. Um, thanks so much, Tamara. I am going to share my screen, but before before I do that, um, I know as part of WTS, we all know that our jobs can be so much bigger than what our job descriptions say, and um, you know what we are tasked with on a daily uh, basis, and um, that's how I got involved uh, in human trafficking uh, awareness many, many years ago when I was over at PennDOT. Um, someone said a very, um, one comment that just resonated with me and, and you know, so many of us, uh, I know that I spent the majority of my career making sure that our roads and our bridges and our transit and all modes of transportation are the best that they can be. And someone just mentioned to me, that's why Pennsylvania is such a high human trafficking uh, location. Because what all we all do is, you know, try to make our transportation modes, you know, the best. And it's also one of the reasons why we have to be aware. Um, so with that, I am going to share my screen. And I uh, hope that I do a decent job here. Okay. Okay, can everybody see? Yep. Okay, Good. wonderful, wonderful. So um, really, really thrilled uh, to be here with you to talk about a, a topic that's so uh, important to all of us. So, you know, also before I go in, you know, right now we're hosting WrestleMania here in Philadelphia. And uh, we're really excited, but big events like WrestleMania and other big events also bring human trafficking uh, with them. A Super Bowl, same thing, sp sporting events um, and, and other events as well. So we are, in fact, sending out communications at SEPTA today, uh, making sure that all of uh, our frontline employees who have had this training are reminded uh, what they're looking for. So I'm so happy again that Tamara went over some of the signs, so important. So here um, is the data which emphasizes um, and, and also shows that um, and why, you know, Pennsylvania, we are ninth in the nation for human trafficking events. Uh, you, here you can see nationwide where the numbers are and here you can see where the numbers are uh, for Pennsylvania. For those of you who may not know SEPTA well, we are the sixth largest mass transit system in the United States. Um, 9,000 employees, over 7,000 of them are frontline and have received, uh, all of us have received uh, human trafficking training. It's part of the training that's offered on an annual basis here. And, and then you can see the other statistics. You can see that even now, um, as we are recovering from the pandemic, still 700,000 trips uh, on our system. Uh, every single day, multiple vehicles, stations, stops and routes. And so we all uh, need to be aware. This is what I wanted to briefly uh, touch on uh, today. I want you to see what we are doing, go over our signage, our training, how we have enabled all of our riders and employers to report things and to report things um, secretly as well. Uh, and then also wanted to talk about uh, how we talk about uh, human trafficking on a regular basis here with, with all of our employees. So first, I just wanted everyone to see signage. And by the way, I already mentioned WrestleMania. The Broad Street Line will be a big uh, mode that uh, people are using. And there will be National Human Trafficking Hotline uh, 
signage along the way. If anyone sees anything, uh, one thing that I would add to what Tamara are, already went over is another sign um, that I've personally seen and have reported to the hotline is not only when someone can't hold on to their own I identification documents, but when they don't hold their own money, when there's someone they're traveling with who won't allow them to handle the money. And we see that in transactions uh, in a variety of ways on SEPTA. And so uh, we have this. And I also, just like Tamara said, I have this in my cell phone as well so that I can call the hotline when needed. All of our frontline employees I talked about uh, get training. That includes um, our over 200 police officers. They are often our eyes and ears on the system, and uh, we make sure that everybody is aware. Uh, we also uh, partner, and we have many partnerships, uh, with the Villanova Law Inst Institute to address commercial sexual exploitation. I have uh, par participated in some of their events, and I've also been able to meet those who have been trafficked uh, survivors. And it's so interesting to hear from them and how we can help uh, and prevent this uh, from happening. Uh, so we continue uh, doing that on a regular basis as well. I mentioned um, that we make sure that our riders can report anything that looks um, unusual to them. And so we have a transit watch app. I encourage every th single SEPTA rider. In fact, I, I encourage anybody who's out and about in the region that SEPTA serves to download this app, uh, transit watch app. If you're making a list of things that you can do, uh, please do this if you don't already have it downloaded. It is free on any iPhone or Android phone. And it's how you can report a problem. And we have different categories and human trafficking is one of those categories. Sometimes if you see something that is concerning to you, uh, you wanna be able to also discreetly report it. And that's what this app allows you to do as well. You can just text in it, you report it, it goes straight to our police dispatch and uh, they will take a look further. And I also encourage all of you, if you, if you see anything that just raises a concern, don't worry and think, well, if this really isn't human trafficking, I don't want to report it. Um, let the experts decide. Um, I went through that back and forth myself when I was on the turnpike and I saw what was showing me the signs I had been trained at and, and, and what identified human trafficking. And I know I questioned myself whether I should report it and uh, just, just do it and let the experts decide. Uh, and that's the best way you can do it. Uh, I also just want everyone to know on this Transit Watch app, you can report anything. If you see um, any type of behavior, it doesn't have to be human trafficking. Also, if you see um, anything that makes you feel unsafe, uh, whether it is um, an individual, whether it's a situation, whether it's um, a, a not so clean area, um, cleanliness can be reported on this as well. And we really need everyone's help to make sure that our system is as safe as possible, that everyone feels as safe as possible. Uh, this is the video uh, uh, that we have put out. We put it out this month. Here's a picture of myself with one of our bus operators, uh, Shirley Russell. I got to go down to USDOT um, and present. Uh, Shirley was just a hero. And uh, she saw when she was on, um, she was operating a bus. And there were two young students, female students, uh, who normally got on her bus and only one of the students got on and seemed uncomfortable. And Shirley said, what's going on? And she said, my friend was supposed to get on the bus with me. Shirley immediately stopped the bus, went back to the bus stop and saw that the other student was being held back by an individual at the bus stop. And Shirley, just uh, her, uh, you know, her good instincts kicked in. She grabbed the student's hand and, and I said, oh, she's supposed to be with me. That's what she said. And she grabbed the student's hand, pulled her away um, from the male that was at the bus stop and grabbed her on and took her onto, um, onto her bus. And we, we, have, we have information that leads us to believe that Shirley truly prevented something horrible from happening. 
and potentially a human trafficking event. So it was wonderful to be able to bring her to USDOT and to applaud her efforts. Um, and we always highlight her. She's a current bus operator by here, uh, here right now as well. Oh, yeah. And um, here's some of the awareness events that we do. Uh, here was an event uh, that we did in January. Uh, we had at the time the police commissioner available. Uh, we have partnerships with churches. Uh, we have partnerships with women's centers. And uh, here uh, in the in the lavender coat is Dr. Ellen Jo Waller, and she is the founder of the She's My Sister Anti-Human Trafficking Ministry at Enon Ta Tabernacle Baptist Church. This particular church in Philadelphia has been an amazing, amazing partner for us, and we continue to work uh, with Dr. Waller. Uh, and her husband, Pastor Waller, who is the pastor at the church. And uh, together, uh, we're working together. Um, their ministry supports uh, a Salvation Army um, initiative, the New Day Center. It's in Kensington. And we know that they are also helping current victims, helping um, raise awareness, and, and truly uh, doing just life-saving work there. It's a partnership we're very proud of. Covenant House is another uh, partner who we have. Um, we just started partnering with them and we brought out we outreach services to strategically uh, targeted locations throughout our system. Our outreach team goes out to the station twice a week on Wednesdays and Thursdays from three o'clock to five o'clock. We're on the platform. Our teams greet, you know, trains when they pass. They educate people, anyone who wants to stop by and ask for their information. And it's part of our scope program of how we're helping those who are unhoused and dealing with mental health challenges or drug addiction as well. Uh, and this is part of our program. And uh, one of the things I am, I am most proud of is being able to talk about this issue. The more we talk about it, the better. And that's why I was so happy to participate in this program. And uh, this program here at WTS and others uh, can, we can talk about how we're putting the brakes on human trafficking uh, led by the USDOT. I got to present at South by Southwest um, with uh, then FTA Administrator Noria Fernandez, um, the president of Track, tr um, Truckers Against Trafficking, Esther Goch, as well as Shea Rhodes, who's at the Villanova Law Stu Institute, who I mentioned. And we got to talk to an international audience about how we are working together. In fact, right now I'm serving with Esther um, on Secretary Buttigieg's Advisory Committee for Human Trafficking. It's a 15 member uh, advisory committee and we're putting together a report how we can all do better and how USDOT can do better, um, raising awareness and helping uh, uh, human trafficking come to an end You know, here in the United States. And so the last slide I wanna um, share with you today is um, how we continue, um, again, talking about this very, very important issue. Um, we have our tr transit police who have ongoing investigations, um, and we see that these efforts are paying off. Uh, we continue to train our bus operators. I mentioned Shirley's story. Um, I would like to mention uh, our transit police uh, while they were investigating, they did find a woman who was being trans uh, trafficked in the Kensington section of the city, and they turned that investigation over to the Department of Homeland Security. That's going on right now. Uh, our police also came into contact with a woman who was riding our Market Frankfurt line. It had been reported to us. Um, she wasn't, uh, you know, she she wasn't acting in a way that. Uh, that seemed appropriate or I shouldn't even say appropriate, just not proper. And she didn't seem like she was in charge of her own um, actions. Uh, she was, it was described, she was of a diminished capacity. And she told the officers herself that she lived in a motel with a man who she identified as Blackbird. And the way, the reason I wanna give you that example is because often the traffickers will not use their real names. They will have code names. So that tipped off our uh, special victims unit uh, with Philadelphia and uh, that trafficking case was initiated. 
Uh, as I mentioned, are putting the brakes on human trafficking. We do several events, including that South by Southwest event uh, and the event at USDOT where we honored um, Shirley. And so we continue uh, to, to keep talking about it, eager to get to uh, any type of question or answers that we have after our panel's uh, talk today. And so thank you again for having us here. And if anyone from WTS or anybody listening today is more interested in any details of how SEPTA is raising awareness, please feel free to reach out to me um, personally. So thank you so much uh, for having us and I will stop sharing. Thank you, Leslie, that's awesome. Thank you for being a voice for SEPTA and sharing your personal experiences as well as SEPTA employee experiences. and like you said, keeping the word out there, talking about it, and keeping this at the forefront. Thank you so much. So now I'll turn it over to Jason to talk a little bit about what the Philadelphia International Airport is doing. Jason? Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me on this panel. Uh, this is definitely something that uh, I've been pretty interested in. Uh, so Philadelphia, uh, has been part of the Blue Lightning Initiative, that's the DHS um, anti-human trafficking um, system for since about 2022. Um, we started having everybody uh, from frontline workers to managers take the Blue Lightning uh, Initiative test. Uh, anytime they get a new badge or a reissue badge uh, starting in 2023, so we're pretty close to having everybody um, who's badged here. We have uh, over 16,500 people actively badged at our airport. Um, so everybody has to take that test. It's mandatory uh, when they get a badge. Um, again, getting that, uh, that awareness out there, uh, showing people who to call, uh, what to do. Um, we've worked hard with our um, police department as well um, to get the word out. Um, and they've seen um, a bit of an uptick in, uh, you know, human trafficking uh, reporting. So I think that we are doing a good job with getting that out there. Um, one of the reasons we we uh, started working with uh, Blue Lightning Initiative was actually when I was on a uh, on a panel with uh, with DHS uh or dot on on that uh one of the victims actually said that they flew through philadelphia international airport so that was one of those uh things i heard and went oh well i think we should probably join this uh we want to just make sure that uh you know it doesn't just happen uh in back alleys or in places you you don't see uh human trafficking can can happen anywhere uh, transit hubs are are huge for uh, for transporting, uh, you know, people, uh, sex trafficking and uh, and labor trafficking. So that's one of the reasons why uh, Philadelphia uh, decided to join uh, Blue Lightning uh, with DHS uh, in order to just make sure that um, we're one of those airports that shows that we're uh, really taking this uh, this seriously. Um, as this is, you know, again, not just, uh, you know, you think about it as sex trafficking, uh, but it's it's everything. Anyone can be trafficked at, a, at any time um, through an airport, through a transit hub. Um, and that's that's one of the reasons why um, I fought hard to get us uh, as part of a part with DHS uh, on that. So, um, again, we also have. Um, uh, every 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 spot in the airport shows where you can call in. Um, all all digital billboards have uh, where you can call in if you see human trafficking. And in the future, what we're looking for is um, to put in all of our stalls and our bathrooms. Um, you know where you can call if you are being human trafficked or if uh, you see somebody who's being trafficked. Um, so that's our next uh, what we're doing next and. We're going to I would love to start a, uh, a human trafficking uh, council here at the airport as well. Um, just have a monthly meeting with all of our stakeholders just to make sure that we keep the messaging out there, because uh, once you stop talking about it, that's when you kind of uh, see uh, less and less people um, uh, 
talking, uh, you know, sending in uh, tips and all that. So um, that's just a few things uh, that Philadelphia International Airport is uh, is doing to help combat uh, human trafficking and very glad to be on this panel because I think uh, we could have a really good discussion um, about what we can do uh, for future use in uh, in trying to stop this uh, this sort of or yeah, this sort of uh, you know th th thing happening uh, all around the world. So that's uh, that's my spiel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jason. I, I think it's great that you guys uh, have everyone that has to get a badge take that training or testing. Um, I, we have a lot of consultants on the calls and I think we all know that's the first thing you have to do whenever you want to do business with PHL or have to be on site, you have to go and get that badge. So I think that touches a lot of people who may have otherwise would not have um, uh, had exposure to human trafficking awareness. So thank you for all of your efforts as well. Yeah, and I think the best part about that is that it reaches the uh, the frontline employees uh, most, right? A lot of the times you get um, you do something and it never reaches the frontline employees. So this is the best way I think to reach those frontline employees, those people that are going to see passengers every single day um, and know and kind of notice if there's something uh, something wrong or something up with with somebody. So that that's kind of why why we decided to do it that way. Wonderful, thank you. So now I will hand it over to Marissa to talk about PennDOT. Thanks, Tamara. Let me pull up my slides. Someone can let me know when they appear. That'd be great. Good, okay, great. Well, thank you to WTS for having me and um, I'm really happy to be here and I do want to acknowledge um, Leslie being such a leader at PennDOT during her tenure. So Leslie, feel free to jump in if I'm missing anything. Um, but I think that the both uh, the both of us could definitely cover what PennDOT has done and is currently doing relating to human trafficking. So just want to preface this presentation by saying that the issue of human trafficking is very multifaceted. And while today we're looking at it from a transportation perspective, I just want to you know, shout out all the other industries that are working on this and that not one sector, not one agency can do this work and it's very collaborative. And I will I will get to that at the end of my slides on, on how the state government is collaborating with each other, with agencies. Um, but on behalf of PennDOT, just wanted to thank the coordinated response of not only our transit partners, but local agencies, other state agencies and our stakeholder groups. Um, and I have this, this little PennDOT by the numbers slide just to, uh, reiterate exactly what Leslie said that Pennsylvania's transportation network is so vast, um, which is great for our state's infrastructure and economic development, but can be a double edged sword in that um, it just provides um, a mechanism for traffickers and for evil. And the vast transportation network is could be a lack of control for those who for victims who are in a trafficking situation. So. Um, Moving on to our, our employee training. So in 2017, PennDOT deployed the combating human trafficking training to all of our driver license center counter staff. Um, so all driver license counter staff take that um, training and there has been a refresher training um, that was implemented in 2022 to update that. Um, and also we work with the Pennsylvania Public Transit Association to provide trainings to all of our transit partners. Obviously, SEPTA has their own their own trainings, but I'm, I'm thinking of some of our rural agencies that might not do this independently. Um, so Penda will facilitate with PPTA to provide that training. Um, in terms of our customers at Drivers License Center, we have, uh, I'm sure you've all gone in to get your licenses and, and things. So we have the, the, the screens. Um, so more than 200 screens at uh, 75 driver's license centers display human trafficking awareness content. Um, and, you know, when when our team at Penda has done the math, they believe that that means that over 2,300 customers per hour are exposed to this awareness messaging. So, you know, 
even if you're, you know, sitting sitting in the waiting room looking at your your phone, hopefully, you know, this hopefully this hits someone. Hopefully, someone in the in the center is paying attention. So I'm going to see if I can play. It's just a 30 second. Um, yeah, so it doesn't have any sound. This just shows what appears at our driver's license centers. So just a, a, a brief clip. Um, let's see if I can. Okay, great. So um, this is some of the more customer outreach that we have at driver's license centers. All this information is provided by Truckers Against Trafficking, um, who who we partnered with. So there are posters for the customer seating area, and then there are posters that are specific to restrooms. Um, so that's just a snippet of those. We also have these mirror clings that display um, in welcome centers and PADOT's welcome centers and rest areas. And these are also um, available and posted in Spanish. So I will say that one of uh, PADOT's goals for this year is just making sure that these are still out there in all of our centers, because of course, you know, I'm not driving around uh, every day, like checking in on these, but I'm thinking over the years, you know, if some, something's been taken down, it would be a good opportunity to refresh and make sure every center has these posted. Um, so as of last week, we have almost 400,000 commercial driver's license holders in Pennsylvania. So that is another area in which PennDOT can target um, both awareness, but also response because uh, the CDL drivers are definitely the eyes and ears of the road and are on the front lines when it comes to you know, seeing something, saying something. So in the commercial driver's manual in Pennsylvania, we have a whole page of truckers against trafficking information that can be seen on the left of your screen. And then we do provide truckers against trafficking wallet cards um, for any commercial driver's license holder that visits a driver license center. So those little wallet cards provide information on the signs of trafficking and how to report it to authorities. Um, and we also provide this information to our third party CDL examiners. And then just a little blurb um, in blue at the bottom that is based on a federal rule and um, uh, legislation. But just another note about CDL drivers is that if uh, someone is convicted of a human trafficking offense, they cannot become a CDL driver. So that's a relatively new um, piece of statute. Um, and then moving into some general collaboration in the Commonwealth, um, PennDOT leads and facilitates the Commonwealth Interagency Human Trafficking Work Group. So that was established, I believe, in 2017, somewhere around that time, and then re-upped in 2022, and now it is active. It meets bi-monthly. We actually had a meeting this morning, so it's been a, a day for me full of this information, but we met this morning. It has over 20 sibling agency participants. We also have um, private organizations. It's really, um, everyone is welcome to join um, in any organization. We do plan to close off some meetings to just state government partners to really get into some policy work. But um, when we have presentations and, and just general, um, like listening and learning sessions, it is welcome to everyone. So we just two weeks ago, last week actually, had um, an interagency event in the Capitol. I um, wanted to share some photos. So attorney, General Michelle Henry was our featured speaker at the press conference. And for those of you not aware, she has started a human trafficking section within the attorney general's office, which is really amazing because she's recognizing that this needs to be its own dedicated force instead of just lumping it in with organized crime. And, you know, even though she won't be the attorney general much longer, she was saying to us how, you know, by instituting it now, it would be really hard to undo it. So hopefully this is a good step forward for whoever does become the next attorney general. Um, so she she spoke and then we had a survivor voice because it is very important to feature those voices. And then our secretary, uh, Mike Carroll, was there in support. So that's some pictures from the press conference. And then we had a whole day of activities. Um, the larger picture on the right, we had 24 organizations around the state come into the Capitol and host informational tables. The whole um, East Wing Rotunda of the Capitol was full. It was 
the energy was electric because it was not only providing information to those who were in the capital, but also all of these organizations networking with each other because as we've discussed, collaboration is key. Um, so we had tables and then we had a panel discussion which featured both law enforcement and more survivor voices just to talk about what can Pennsylvania do, what are best practices. Um, so it was an overall very successful day. Um, and then just wanted to mention one more item, more of a statewide item, but um, I, as a representative from PennDOT, am participating in this project. So Act 105, which is one of Pennsylvania's human trafficking laws, has a provision that any money, or excuse me, yes, any money that is uh, a penalty from a human trafficking prosecution goes into a grant fund. So um, the, the long and short of it is um, there was a, there is a $250,000 grant for 30 months of work for an entity in Pennsylvania to establish a website, a website that could be targeted for, you know, those who are facing human trafficking, for those um, practitioners, and for the general public to just get the trusted embedded information about trafficking. Because um, as I'm sure a lot of you know, there's a lot of myths. It's not what you see in Hollywood. Um, so the project has just kicked off. It will focus on labor and sex trafficking and, um, Shea Rhodes and Villanova will be leading this project. So um, like I said, it's in the first quarter, but um, I'm on the project advisory council for that. And so we're currently reviewing all the trainings that are currently out in Pennsylvania to decide, you know, what deserves to be on this website as, you know, the clearinghouse, the gold standard of PA for human trafficking information. So that is something that PennDOT is participating in. Um, and then just I'll, I can end my presentation, uh, my slide deck, but thank you so much. And I think we're opening it up for, for questions for anybody, but I'd be happy to take some as well. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. And uh, thank you for pointing out that this is a collaborative effort between many different um, industries. The map or the, the, um, the slide that you showed with all the different um, avenues that human trafficking can be used uh, by the, I, I think that was very telling just to show how intricate this whole network could be. And no doubt traffickers know about that and they they use it. Um, so it's it's really good to be aware of that. So at this time we can take questions. We do have one question in the chat. How does trafficking overlap with limited English proficient populations? How does this vary across the Commonwealth? Um, this person saw some multilingual uh, signage in the examples here today, and how common is the multilingual signage? I, I can talk about it a little bit. Um, so on the uh, on, on Secretary Buttigieg's advisory committee for human trafficking, we're split up into three groups. I'm the chair of the data and research committee. So we're actually looking into this, um, uh, you know, just seeing where where the data is going to take us so that we can um, advise uh, others what languages need to be included and, and, and things like that. I know for us at SEPTA, we always try to get signage also in um, in Spanish and in Mandarin, uh, the, the two uh, other languages that are spoken most frequently in the SEPTA service area besides English. But I think as many languages as we can make it available uh, is, is very, very important. Um, because again, when people don't have their documentations with them, when they don't, you know, they're, they're being trafficked, um, the trafficker, if they don't also understand the language that is being spoken around them, it, it also gives the trafficker more, more power, as you can understand that as well. Right. Thank you for that, Leslie. We have another question. How do you see the implementation of real ID laws next year affecting the dynamics of human trafficking? I think this one might be directed toward me. Um, you know what? I haven't thought of that. So thank you for bringing that up. I do know that Pennsylvania, um, it won't be mandatory for an individual to get a real ID, but, you know, just learning about trafficking through my tenure at PennDOT, I've 
it's a sign, you know, if someone does not have an identification or 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 sometimes a trafficker will um, falsify identification documents for a victim. So I don't know about real ID in particular, but I do know that identification is any kind of ID is is really a big component of this when someone is, you know, taken from their their identification is taken from them or if they're given a falsified uh, document. I could probably speak a little bit on that. Um, TSA is going to require uh, real IDs in 2025 as long as they don't push it back again. So we're hoping that that could stop uh, a lot of trafficking. Um, there's no data on it yet, but uh, definitely something that we can uh, take a look at when it starts in 2025, um, requiring a, a real ID to come through uh, through the checkpoints. OK, thank you for that, Marissa and Jason. Um, are there any other questions? Feel free to come off mute and ask your questions if you have one or type it in the chat. OK, so there's a comment that they agree on having information um, in as many languages as possible. Um, they think the vocabulary used is also important. The question, is there a better term than human trafficking? Does a young person with limited education understand what we mean? Yeah, I, I have a few comments on that question. Um, I think it is important. I don't know if there's a better term um, than human trafficking, uh, but what I did learn when I went through the training and also in conversations that I've had um, with those who have been trafficked, I think it is common. I can't say for it's not it's not true of every case, but I think it's very common for those who are being trafficked to not even understand they are being trafficked because the traffickers, you know, they approach um, the victims and they approach them as they're helping them. They're providing them for housing. Some of them are coming from very difficult situations. Maybe they're dealing with homelessness at the time. Maybe they're dealing with being, you know, estranged from their families for some reason. Maybe they've left their home country and trying to, to figure out um, certain things. Maybe they're feeling very alone um, at the times and, and, and maybe they need resources. They haven't been able to get a job. They haven't been able to support themselves. And so they see their trafficker as someone who's helping them. The, the trafficker could be providing clothes for them. The trafficker could be, you know, providing shelter and, and other safety um, uh, needs for them. And so uh, it's really important uh, when they put up signs and to, uh, to approach those conversations. And I believe it is important um, with how we talk about it. And again, um, you know, being part of this larger advisory committee, um, they're looking at that. So the first uh, report was done in 2019. We're now going to revise the report and update and fill in the gaps that we need uh, now in 2024. And there are a lot. And the, the one thing I do want to add here, as far as a term of human trafficking, what we're finding in our research is that there is not one definition that all these different groups are, are using and all the different data gathering, right? What, what exactly, um, you know, what does it mean in different, in different areas as well? So it's something that, you know, it's broadly defined, uh, but also something that, you know, we have to pay attention on, on the definition as well. Wonderful. Thank you, Leslie. Um, another question. I, TSA and custom agents have specific training in this area. Is that correct? Yeah, I could speak to that. So customs has their own uh, uh, human trafficking training. Uh, they will go up to somebody. They'll ask certain questions, right? You can't lead them on thinking that, you know, they can't just say you're being human trafficked, right? So that was another, going back to the last question, right? Someone has to know that they're being trafficked uh, at, and and in order to get the help in the first place. Um, so yeah, our police, uh, our 
customs uh, and TSA will take our actual training as well. Um, but yeah, customs definitely is one of the big ones that has their own uh, in-depth training uh, in terms of, uh, you know, looking for human trafficking and exactly what to say to to a victim of human trafficking in order to get them to start, you know, realizing that they're actually being trafficked. Uh, again, we'll go back to the fact that um, more often than not, people won't think they're being human trafficked. Um, you know, they have to come to a realization on their own uh, that they are actually being trafficked uh, and, and kind of understand what that means. So, and a lot of those people actually won't want to admit that they're being trafficked, right? Um, so that's that's one of the things that, um, you know, our law enforcement customs uh, will definitely uh, kind of get to uh, in their questioning. But um, you will get a lot of times where uh, you get somebody getting questioned um, by a certain person, um, but they're not actually being trafficked, but it looks like something crazy is going on. So um, it's it's really, uh, it's it's about, you know, how you approach somebody, how you question them. Um, and that's where uh, our law enforcement, uh, we use Philadelphia Police Department and the uh, and the uh, the customs uh, team here as well. Um, learn how to how to deal with that uh, in in a certain way. Wonderful. Um... Okay, so I think we, we have time to take one more question quickly. Do you foresee more trafficking moving to ground transportation, transit and inner city rail and bus, especially uh, due to real ID for air travel? I mean, I I would say that it's it's probably hard to to tell what what's going to happen. Traffickers are very smart and they kind of change with the industry. So that could very well happen, but I think there's no way to tell for sure. Um, Jason, did you have a comment on that? Yeah, I was gonna agree with that. I don't know if we can tell at the moment if that's gonna change anything, but if somebody wants to do something, they'll do it. Um, that's how I've always seen it. Um, and it's not just somebody even just flying through, right? It could be someone who ends up working uh, at an airport or or something like that because, you know, it's labor trafficking um, is is probably bigger than uh, than sex trafficking. So um, you just have to remember that, um, you know, traffickers will always find a way to um, make really good copies of real IDs or um, or any IDs for that matter. They can they can come up with ways to to fool the system. So hopefully uh, this real ID will uh, show a drop off in at least air travel. Um, but I'm not too sure just yet. We'll have to see what happens when the when the data starts coming in on that. Thank you, Jason. And I think I can answer this last question quickly. If a person makes a report to the hotline, is it anonymous or will the reporter have follow up involvement? Um, reports made to the National Human Trafficking Hotline are completely anonymous. And I, I'm thinking that's the case with other um, other instances as well. Well, um, at this time, oh, go ahead, Marissa. Tamara, I just wanted I, 30 seconds of everyone's time to mention, um, I tried to put the attachment in the chat, but it's 593 pages, so I don't think it would let me, but if anyone has some time for some light reading, um, the 2021 National Outreach Survey for Transportation, which is all about human trafficking, um, was released just a few months ago. Um, so I can, Tamara, if you're not, if you don't have that on you, I can send it to you if you're interested in sending it out to the group. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so at this time, I want to thank all of the presenters here for taking out the time to talk to the audience about this. And thank you for your candid conversation and answering these questions. Thank you, audience, for these wonderful questions. Um, so hopefully this will encourage all of you to learn more about this and also spread the word and educate others that you know. So before we wrap up, I do want to mention some upcoming events for WTS Philadelphia. 
our professional development uh, group has a session coming up demystifying the application of AI and transportation. That's a virtual event that will take place on April 23rd from 11.45 a.m. to 1.15 p.m. Um, it's free and you'll get one PDH and or one CCM credit. And then our professional development Learn from a Leader summer series will be starting up soon and the registration will be opening for that shortly. Also, I will put the link to Polaris in the chat. This is just one resource for information. Um, we'll also share the information that Marissa will send to me as well. And with that, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thank you.